No, I'm going to just stand here. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, good evening. Welcome to tonight's lecture. And we're delighted to introduce uh, Charles Arsenari tonight uh, for tonight's talk. Um, Charles founded speculative research agency White Box, Black Box in 2009, and is cu currently conceiving the library is on fire um, with the Luma Foundation and is also writing Molly Psycho Mantis Bloom. Um, he's a difficult man to introduce, actually, kind of as elusive as the descriptions of his work um, are sometimes in all the best ways. Um, so trying to encapsulate what he's going to describe to you tonight is a little bit like trying to bottle a ghost. Um, but I enjoy his work as a kind of dream that we might inhabit um, together. Uh, he, asked, he asked his media studies students here at the AA, um, what if we could access a text or a film in the way one might enter an abandoned spaceship? Um, and in that way, Charles is the guide. Um, and in the Shapes of Fiction, which is the title of the course, um, existing novels, poems, films, exhibitions, and video games are examined and inhabited as he takes us on a mission to wander through their structure, uh, climbing into the kind of DNA of their narratives, I suppose. So tonight, he'll be your guide um, as he takes you through some of those super habitable structures, and I'm sure it'll be an inspiring journey. Thanks a lot, Charles. Charles Arsene Henry, thank you. So actually, I'll just also it uh, it will be as a lucid dreamer <laughs> that I will enter uh, the lecture, and hopefully uh, will at some point uh, wake up to become a reader. And I promise you, I am not sure I will. So I might only be uh, dreaming, and I feel a little bit sad for some of you. You came to see that. But we will see. A dream for, if, if, if you look at it very, very, very simply, uh, there is a form of interlacing between perception, memory, and anticipation. So the part, the, the, the dream part of, uh, of the lecture uh, will be trying to, as if like, there's an issue of the swamp thing, it does exactly that, he runs, grabbing uh, Abigail uh, through the forest, trying to escape spirits. So trying to grab memories of and references, perceiving in real time escape, and anticipating for a state here, a state of fiction, wondering what will exist, if it will exist, between helmet and screen, or between eyes and page. And um, to do, so that's it. And the first, the first, let's say, the first scape will be 
between the space between this poem and this one. So what happened in the late 19th century that led from this poem by the same writer as this one? The writer is called, uh, the poet is called Stéphane Mallarmé. The first poem is Le Vierge, Le Vivace et Le Bel Aujourd'hui, and, uh, and, and this one is The Throw of the Dice, Never Will Abolish Chance. Here is Crisis on Infinite Earth, almost exactly, I think, published a century after. Ah, this is. And, um, and we might, we might use uh, Crisis on Infinite Us to uh, light this scape between Le Vierge, Le Vivace et Le Bel Aujourd'hui and A Throw of the Dice Will Never, ab never Abolish Chance. First,
So I don't know if you, I don't know if you feel um, already what happened between between the first and the second poem. And I won't, I won't, uh, I won't describe it uh, with any form of uh, historical uh, adequation or truth. Again, I'm, 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 I'm somehow lucid dreaming what I'm telling you. But we can try and just from these fragments uh, coming from Malarmé, describing his poetry, we can try maybe to figure out, to figure out something that if not historically uh, exact, might be uh, operationally working or operationally uh, existing. So you just, it's very, um, it probably exists in a different, in a, in a different state in, uh, and no, in, different, uh, in different languages, but what you have here, it's uh, what is called an Alexandrine um, made, and I don't know uh, the exact vocabulary, but let's say made of 12 beats. It's not beats, it has another name, a name I don't know in English, so you can find. Uh, but let's say it is made of like 12 X. You see, 12 and 12 and 12 and 12 and 12. By the end of the 19th century, Malame wrote a text called uh, Crisis in Verse, or Crisis of Verse, in which he described uh, the situation of French poetry, relating it to the situation of French society one century earlier, so the revolution, and attributing to it the same importance, if not, again, on the same version of things. So what was, um, what was, it, at some point, how like the, how the 12, as the, as the meters, that are like the verse that were like metered, uh, start getting looser or start liberating itself from the, the latent, let's say the latent keyboard, the latent keyboard of its possibilities that start to get uh, out of like the virtual grid you were supposed to occupy on a page. So first as instead of 12, it was 11 and 13. And then in two, went two in two directions, one which was the prose poem, and one which is in French called Vers Libre, translated in English into free verse. Um, free verse where, uh, doesn't matter. Just imagine, just imagine a verse that is free of like, that is free, so it might be just here, and then it will be here, and then it will go here, and here, and here, and here. So this, what does it, what, what do you find here? Um, this broken verse, playing with stones and hidden rhymes, according to a more complex tears. So that is a problem that I cannot read Malame now, like the exact, the poem, because trans translation is so fragile and the way it does exist in English is, ex is also extremely fragile. Um, most of the time, for example, this line, which is just like uh, one among many, you find a broken verse playing with stones and hidden rhymes, like a more complex thesis. So just we can stop like this. It's like, uh, more, like, like if you have, if you read like a more thesis, it is not at all the same that according to a more complex thesis. A thesis, maybe someone knows, a thesis, it looks like this. This is a thesis. Okay? So like a more complex thesis, like a more complex thesis. Now if you go to tears.
Okay. So if I if you go if you if you go back to a broken verse playing with stones and hidden rhymes according to more complex tears, which is which is the verse. The verse still exists. And here it describes even the prose poem. So the verse still exists, but it, it still exists according to a more complex tears. So according to a more complex here, like efflorescence. Right? So it starts, it starts to what will become and what has become in Malarmé almost is, is the core, I mean, almost, or the, ah, almost the, the, the central, the central, uh, the central vessel of his, of his, of his poetry which is to paint not the thing, but its effects. And here, the same way you find like a crisis on uh, infinite earth, uh, few like, de like one decade ago, here like, and it is the hypothesis, you have something that is fundamental that was happening to poetry through like this very specific condition of its verse. Can go there. The pure work implies the elocutionary, elocutionary disappearance of the poet who yield the initiative to the words mobilized by the clash of the inequality. Okay. Well, they light up with reciprocal reflections, like a virtual tray of fires or jewels, replacing the respirations perspectival in the old lyric press or the enthusiastic personal direction of the sentence. Very simply, here again, you have the direction of the sentence. So, if actually, like, uh, it's, uh, it's quite brutal as a formulation, the personal direction of the sentence. As, you know, so, as if the director, yeah, well, the director, it's this, quite the same in cinema. You have some state of cinema, for example, where the image seems not to obey uh, something that has been dictated by a script, but starts to find in themselves a way to carry on. So here, it's not the personal direction of a sentence, but things start to reciprocally reflect each other. So if you imagine words, the words going like on the line, all of a sudden, you can feel already that through like this, through like this reciprocal reflection, you can, you can, so first it was a form of like inflorescence that was, that was still, that could still be detected within a poem, even a prose poem. Ver, a verse could be detected. And here, it's as if the line was starting to be able to dislocate themselves because the word starts to not exist like these, but start to exist in or on uh, layers. Everything becomes suspense, disposition of fragments, with alternations and oppositions concurring into the total rhythm which will be the, pire, the poem Silence in the white space, only translated in a way by each pendant. So,
It is, it is, a, it is a reference to what in France is called lustre. Um, in English, uh, uh, in English, ch chandelier. I think I don't know if it, I don't know if the word lustre exists in English. No. So, um, illust you have in French illustration. Again, and I promise you, it is just a way to traverse this. It is not a, so a possible way to say, okay, you have the tears. Not tears, but you have the tears, this efflorescence. And then within the poem, almost like giving, giving it its um, ways of or its formation, you, have the, you will have the lustre. And the lustre, if you, it's simply, it's simply, it is, um, it is a series or a construction of a prism that diffracts light. So already you see, when you look back at here, the white of the poem might not be the white or might connect to the white of not the absence of color but of the total spectrum of them. And while, what would it mean for a poem to exist in such a spectrum? So the lustre, uh, this series of, uh, of prism. And, and then we, uh, we saw like last time in, in, in Shapes of Fiction and even like probably be, be since the beginning, how like, from a simple phrase uh, that was in a um, uh, uh, Harry uh, text, uh, oh, what if we will replace uh, mirrors by prism? And uh, well, you can, you, can, you know, it's beautiful to think about it. You know, how many, how you will, how you will make, a, how you will, how you will go slightly away from identity and 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 adequation and. Uh, and finding a lot on the text, like finding back its secret uh, code and message, but rather than to reflect, like to, def to diffract. What do they mean also to read, not as a, uh, exactly, not through mirror, but like through a prism? And you, you still, with the, with the, with the, with the lustre, there might be something that, if you can see, it's almost, uh, it's almost, uh, it's almost uh, the image, like, it's almost the image that is not, again, that is not painting, again, not, do not paint the thing, like, paint its effects. So not the, the, the image that is the very, uh, that the very like functioning of like of the poem. But if you think of it, it, it still can be contained from its like from its uh, from its from its volume. Whereas what happens probably with with the with the throw of the dice is that the lustre somehow like. A, somehow like explodes. So you had, you know, you had, again, you have to think of the Alexandrine that slowly could become, could lose, like could, could lose its regularity, but still like a more complex tissues could be found. And, and there's the lustre, and at some point it's as if like something was completely like disseminated as a constellation. Um, there might be two uh, possible entry to.
see exactly this. This here. Yeah. So when when the when the when the when the lustre uh, um, becomes a constellation, so there is no difference. There is no at the same time like the reading. Of course, is spacing, but you see, but what you have is or what you get probably is one well, the hypothesis is that you 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 go from Alexandrine metric verse free verse, and that uh, Malarmé discovered the multiverse, but not as just the same as like with him doing a poem, not as an image of like what he has discovered, but actually literally that he has discovered the multiverse. It might not be the cosmological like formulation of it, but it might be full or still like, or still have something that is something that, a form of virtuality that is still possible to to go and and extract, or to go and um, and um, almost plug yourself into, in order to again, because I'll go I'll 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 I'll, I'll go in it later. But all of this is the the absolute beauty of 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 Malarmé is to have at that moment completely have, um, broken the link between. Uh, fiction and, and narrative, and I, you know, and how good it feels. I mean, it's probably not yet felt completely. You, how many times you around see the narrative of, as if it was like an equivalence between the two. But not and not again. It's of course it it happens in the it happens in the in the in the volume that the poem became. But how beautiful is it? everything takes place in sections. In French, it's en raccourci, so it's 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 between section and and shortcuts. As hypothesis, narrative is avoided. No, like how like st that's what he, when he says the phrase came back virtual, but this phrase is still completely virtual. Everything takes place in sections. As hypothesis, narrative is avoided. It is a description of throw out of the dice. I could almost like, uh, I mean, if it was just, if you it, if it could have just set this phrase in front, or I don't know, in this, uh, um, Pynchon calls it the perilous, uh, the perilous gulf between uh, uh, eyes and, and screen, or eyes, you know, this, which is also now a, a form of, uh, I mean, which is also a place of both occupation and resistance. We were speaking with um, uh, Shapes of Fiction, like last time, uh, the voice you hear when you read. What is the voice you when I mean, I don't know if you hear one or two or several ones, and, but they are also all a possibility of protecting, of, of resisting. It's uh, an action, you know, so this place. And everything takes place in section, as hypothesis, narrative is avoided. It's, it's, it's uh, Bon, if I can just like uh, <laughs> I could have write, written just this uh, just this phrase and avoid like the the confusion. So if we here, if you think of a, of a fiction and that's it, and what if alors then like what if fiction then is like. Uh, narrative is uh, abandoned, I mean, not abandoned, narrative is uh, avoided. But fiction continues. And how it continues, it continues with hypothesis. You can see, you started with the, the, the tears, and of course, the tears and the way it is an inf efflorescence should be like um, studied much more like closely. But you have this, and often you arrive with this fiction to be. The fiction in which sense? Okay, but for the moment, fiction to be that is still completely unknown. That is still like, uh, that is, I mean, mal that's mal that is still um, also a force of, uh, of yeah, a force of uh, liberation too, resistance, and uh, may maybe uh, yeah, resistance for sure. So 
by hypo but the hypothesis, like you had the flower, now it's like almost a, a flower of, uh, or not even flower, like a constellation now, on the scale of constellation of hypothesis. Um, If you if you if you remember the if you remember the not the di direction of the sentence, but the reflections reciprocal reflections. You know, you see. That's what is almost mysterious when uh, and if and I hope you will uh, read uh, Malarmé, is that it seems to be opaque and obscure, and yet it reaches a state of pure limpidity. But not of pure limpidity when you can access like uh, a, a, the way like a mind has felt at some point, but when you can access exactly this, for, this first presence of things in themselves. Things become limpid and almost not as being described one to one, but as existing in the way things or in the way the poem appears. So just again, think of the image that was an hybrid between an uh, alien and, um, and Solaris. You know, when this green uh, glyph became the, the ocean of uh, the Solaris uh, Sea. Exactly this, so it doesn't exist as a one-to-one -one description, but somehow it has infiltrated the way things appear. And this is, that's it, and through, through, um, through a poem, it's here. One of the phrases, remember, everything became suspense. So, suspense. Of course, you will, you will find the suspension of the lustre, okay, of the, of the, I don't like this word, so can we, can we keep lustre instead of chandelier? Lustre. So, you will find the suspension of the lustre. Ah, but then, what if the lustre had replaced illustration the way like hypothesis has replaced narrative. So which means setting up inside the volume of the poem a lustre that will refract. We might start to feel that <laughs> there might be a reason for, 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 for this to exist in an, in an architecture school. So this white first, but just as simple hypothesis, might not be a white of uh, absence of light, but might be like the white of its total spectrum. What would it mean? Well, again, what would it mean to replace, alors, almost as a political action, uh, you could imagine uh, instead of breaking nose of statues, you would replace uh, mirrors with a uh, prism. That could be, you know, that could be a new, uh, not a new, but uh, yes, that could be. Um, and it, but that would, okay. And everything becomes suspense. It is also because the way the words, even the characters appear on the white is part of the poem. It's incredible. So the white is revealed for the first time, but by also being revealed and revealed as, you know, it is, the poem becomes in French, is a milieu. Alors, milieu, it's both a medium. Milieu, it does exist in English. Milieu becomes a milieu. 
and that is that starts to be like uh, yes so fiction as a milieu maybe as a pure milieu rather than narrative so of course a fiction will not be uh, any more uh, have to, to, to always be here as an alibi not to do something else but will start to be considered as the domain of pure operations. And that's the equivalence like Mallarmé uh, drew, again, like in the uh, late 19th century, fiction equals, which is strange, but which is now, I think, I hope you can feel, and I know it is not clear, but it doesn't matter. It is something to be felt, and then like the clarity will come from reading. It is fiction, equals poetry, equals operation. And can reach the title now of the lecture, not completely fully awake, unfortunately, but um, if Fiction has been liberated. That would be a definition of metafiction. Hopefully renewed. Um, very hopefully uh, useful in some way. Um, of course. I think that would be a little bit severe. These four operations, and that's it. Uh, no, no, of course not. It's just, uh, it's just an example. I mean, for examples. Um, bon, uh, a state of fiction in which operations, including transitions, tropic movements, speeds, scopic shifts are entities equal to heroic characters. It is not probably the most, as they say in mathematics, it's not probably the most elegant definition. And, I, and if one is ready, who has a grasp of English, a Malamean grasp of English to, to refine it, it is really, um, it exists here. So um, it would be great if you could leave the screen. So what is, everything becomes suspense, and the apparition of things are part of the things. So here, with the phosphorescent, through phosphorescence, phosphorescence has gone, it doesn't matter, it is here, it's crisis, it doesn't matter. Um, no, it is here, phosphorescence. So of course, this is um, Fade to Black by Philippe Parreno which here, like, are three posters and a window programmed to open and close from time to time. Um, this is very, uh, in general, a, a, a work um, you know, when a phrase starts to become an exit, when a phrase, you can almost enter, again, you can almost enter a phrase and, and, you, and you start to, you start to, uh, you, uh, sometimes it's difficult. 
uh, you start to not lay, you, you start to um, display, you start to display it as if it was an exhibition, I mean, an abstract exhibition. Malarmé, you do this all the time. That's what, it's, that's what it is. That's what it is a, a milieu in the sense of the sea or, or air. And that would be one interpretation. At the center of it, you will see this. It's a, this, a storm, a storm and, and, and some uh, weir, uh, weir pools, I don't know, uh, some, um, let's say, uh, submarine tornado. And, and, the, and, the, and the ship is being taken by the pool and the, and the captain, you only see now like his last uh, feather and you wonder if he will throw a last, it's really bad, it doesn't matter. Uh, if you were going to throw like a last throw of the dice, and he, he well, it's, it's a, but um, at some point they say, oh, but let's say, or oh, maybe no, there will be nothing, just um, the place in your, okay, just the only thing that would have taken place would have been the place in French, say, le lieu. So then, and medium or milieu is lieu and lieu. Maybe the lieu of the lieu is the milieu. So maybe the, the place of the place is the medium. So you would have, you would have, but, said, but accept, accept nothing or accept a constellation. And of course, you can look at the poem um, as a, a, this is a, bon, to go back is a, the first time also, the, the, the unit of the poem is not only a page, it's the double page. So the unit of the poem is the screen that the books become once opened. Right? There is no here that that will count for one page, even if laid out on a double. Just, uh, and what you will have is if it's a medium, it's the constellation, yes, might be seen as the one of the poem. But as a reader, you will have to do exactly this because, not, because now things are not given in like the, what was called the direction of the sentence. Because now, like as if refracted by an uh, first invisible uh, lustre and now like visible constellation, what you have to redo as a reader is the, also the way that he has been writing the poem, which is through the demon of analogy. What you start doing, it's like you have to draw links. You have to actually make the constellation. So maybe the maybe of the constellation is not related to some kind of like secret code, but it is maybe simply because in the hope of like, encountering a reader. And that's another beauty of like a throw of the dice, is that you access, is, it, be, it belongs to this type of almost entities through which you access a state of reading. The way you will access a state of consciousness, or the way you will, uh, one uh, maybe particle will access a quantic state. You access a state of reading. This, I promise, <laughs> you can. Um, and, this, and it starts. It starts to be, and it starts to be, also because it exists in the white. This, this, the possibility of these links. The suspense is, of course, of the way things appear how they appear on the page, when do they, or where do they, but it is also how, it is also the very um, links that will exist between them. And if you think of the multi, I mean, if you think of the image of the multiverse, it's already and made of here different, or you have the question of which is always the question when you have something as soon as like you have different is the communication between the two. And then further on, the vessel that will take you from one to the other. What will how you will how will you go from one image to the next? 
How will you go from one thought to the next? And this is pure thought. That's why you say like fiction equals operation. This is pure thought. I mean, I don't know, and it's extremely ambiguous, and it's clearly that when you see like a FMRY, you don't uh, look at the thought uh, in the <laughs> in real time. You 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 of course you look at an, you look at an image. But what seems to be quite certain is like something is moving and almost drawing. And so fiction as the domain of operation, or even metafiction, it is concerned to pure thought. It is not a form of second degree of, fic of fiction. It is concerned like with pure thought. How, for example, do you go from one image to the next? Again, in shapes of fiction, we're speaking about the computer, like a computer, like uh, because of course you start to see a, a lot of computers now, like the the quantic compute now the quantic computing, uh, and you, you know, notice that, <laughs> that how it goes back, not to Malarmé, but even not going back. Actually, this is something that. Uh, It's an image of, a, I mean, on the left, huh? you know, <laughs> on the right, I'm sure you, you know better uh, than I do. Uh, on the left, it's, a, it's an image of a book. It's called Open Book. It was painted in a f a, around 1500. It is in the collection at the um, Uffizi in, uh, in Florence. And it, it, is, it is okay, you know, this, this uh, the, this feeling you have sometimes when you go back and it feels like you, you, you have not going, you have not gone back, but you actually, you actually traveled, uh, you have actually traveled further. Is this? This is an this is an impossible page. That is just made like for red, to to meet or converge in uh, at some at some in some vantage point. It is a book that. Tries again, like that. Tries like to reach a state. The same with like the same with the the same with the, the throw of the dice, and this. When you when you go back, it might it might be um, it might be it could be called uh, uh, almost uh, yes, cliffic uh, cliffic etymologies. You know, so when going back to an etymology. And this is clear, like the etymology. Bon, we we also, you have um, a state a state of uh, of libraries before like printing process when rooms like existed, such as like scriptorium. You look at the sample like uh, etymology of bibliography. It's very simple. It is like book writing. So. Maybe I mean um, you, you probably you probably you probably knew, but this this kind of this thing like when you look at bibliography and you find like book writing, it's interesting, no? To look at the bibliography not as this list that comes after, but that is uh, book writing. Um,
So in, in, uh, a form of all the consequence of <coughs> the, the, the Malame uh, multiverse is that each, what you call like pendant, or like each pendant of the lustre is becoming itself a point of view. <laughs> so, and if you add if you add the formulations or another formulation, that will go through uh, Leibniz by uh, uh, Gilles Deleuze will be it is not several point of view on one city or one town, but each point of view is uh, each point of view is a town. And here again, like it, it would not be metafiction; it would be science fiction, or a facet of science fiction that uh, exists exactly here, <coughs> to not, uh, but to reveal something that is uh, probably fundamental to fiction, because it has to fabricate its viewpoint. You know, it is. It has to constitute, to secrete a viewpoint, and maybe f for some of you, no, no. I was going to say him, but uh, yes, know him. It's um, I know him. Boom. Uh, it's a something by Alan Moore, and if. Oh, it's again just two possible entries. The, the throw of the dice for this prismatic, this prismatic existence of fiction, this prismatic occupation in a in a volume, and the something for the construction of a viewpoint. So. Some of you know already, but something was a, a pulp a horror a comic uh, book. And at some point, they were, um, I think, on the decline, and they asked uh, Alan Moore to take over. Alan Moore had just completed V for Vendetta. And so he took over the Swamp Thing. Um, in the first issue, he was in charge of, he killed the Swamp Thing. Uh, and in the second issue called The Anatomy Lesson is he resurrected it. Um, but through res resurrecting it, he completely changed. So before Alan Moore, uh, Swamp Thing was a, was a classic uh, pulp horror hero. Alec Holland, a scientist, uh, had made a scientist that, a, a sound, a, an experiment that turned bad. Um, or it was sabotaged, doesn't matter, uh, catch fire and jumped into the swamp and became half a man, half a plant, swamp thing. Alan Moore arrives and he makes of the swamp thing a plant with delusion of grandeur. So he makes of the swamp thing a plant that convinced itself that at some point it had been human but had never been. So a form of, um, uh, and, and it changed completely because before you, it was a form of almost a quest, uh, almost like Odys Odysseus quest to go back to Itaka, Itaka being like his lost humanity with something, with an animal, something loses its Itaka and can become anything. It becomes a pure like futuristic, construction of its viewpoint, because the comic book started to follow this intelligence that was not human, had never been human. So things start to slow down, spread around, and become almost uh, geologic. So it is not, again, a description of a character. It is the fabrication of a point of view. 
but it's quite also something that um, when you open a novel on the first page and you see uh, that name, uh, that name has to be constructed or will be. Or it, you have different, but let's say this is also something that is, it's not, not one, not one and not, not a variety of viewpoints set on the same common object, but as many cities or towns, it doesn't matter like what you, as they are points of view. And of course, um, I'm uh, <laughs> quite shy to tell you this, I mean, to tell it to you, but you, I'm sure you, you know the, the Peter Webb, Peter Webb? No, Michael Webb, <laughs> the Michael Webb um, uh, book, Temple Island, I mean book and, and probably one of these form that, uh, there's a beauty, there's a, a saying by Stendhal that is uh, the novel is a mirror you carry along um, a chemin, along a path. And sometimes you can feel in, in some writers or in some yeah, architect uh, that they, it's not, a, it's not a mirror, actually it might be a prism, I don't know, but that they, they carry something almost in the, somewhere in the palm of their hand that carries through any possible project. It's something that is quite beautiful. There is something that almost attracts passing through any given project. So it's not at all a project like an orientated um, way of uh, thinking. It is that something persists through, goes through any given project. And, uh, and of course, this, this, this almost like bleeding edge between, uh, between scape and scope. No, there is something you, 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 you cannot, it's almost like a meta, meta stable condition where you don't know if it's a scape or a scope. It might be like a, 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 a periscape or a, what would be the good stuff for the scope, a periscape or... No, doesn't matter. Periscape. Doesn't matter, periscape or... No. Um, Yes, periscope or landscape. <laughs> um, and where does it where does it exist? Uh, where does it exist? Uh, the 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 resurgam, the name of this uh, vessel. And again, think of the of the multiverse. Like, how do I go from one to the other? Is there not a need like for vessel of such a beauty, like, there's not a need for things to also exist within this perilous gulf bit of, uh, between eyes and screen. I mean, uh, which, is, uh, which is, again, like a space of occupation, a space that is being occupied, so which is a space of resistance. So can you resist through Resurgam or Le Navire Night, which is another vessel, it's another uh, it's a ship, Le Navire Night. Uh, Le Navire, uh, Le Navire Night, is, it would be literally like a, a ship named Night. And it is a vessel invented this time by a, a writer, Marguerite Duras. Each night in Paris, hundreds of men and women anonymously use telephone lines that date from the German occupation and are no longer listed to talk to each other to love each other. These people, shipwrecked lovers, are dying to love, to escape the abyss of solitude. You remember that the first cape was the space between these two poems, and in, in, in the middle there was like crisis on infinite us, so to end, and really I hope uh, at some point to, to wake up, um, I go quick, and some of you know, 
the DC uh, universe multiverse and maybe even much better and more profoundly than I do. I just took what I felt I needed. At some point, DC is uh, Batman, Superman and uh, others. And at some point they were because of the way comic books are done, different with writer and like uh, uh, someone who will do uh, the, the drawings and the, and the colors and the ink, etc. And you, had, you started to have version of, uh, according to different writers, uh, versions of the Batman. And some of them started to be self-contradictory. So for some reasons, uh, of course, uh, that will be a mix. But you can, you can uh, look at them ethereally, and it's quite beautiful. But of course, it, it can be also commercially of like new readership arriving on the market, and things need to be clarified. But still, you can look at it through, you know, through like um, setting up 50% uh, opacity on uh, on uh, Malarmé uh, through of the da through of the dice and look through it like to uh, Crisis on Infinite Earth or th through to the DC universe. And DC early on um, decided that they, they they were not a universe but a multiverse. So it was an ideal decision, and therefore, like there were no contradiction between the different versions, the different, the different, uh, but they were like existing within like a, a, a multiverse made of so many versions. At some point, the the writers probably like uh, felt like uh, they could they have like they had an entire new volume uh, around them and version multiplied and start like again self-contradicting themselves to a level of like uh, opacity. So DC Multiverse asked as an editorial decision, ask writers to crush worlds within the DC Multiverse. But not to crush it as a decision that, oh, this, this world is not functioning like we're we going, no. It, it will go through fiction that the multiverse will be crushed down back to a single universe. And this is what it was. Crisis on Infinite Earth was the adventure of going back from the multiverse to the universe. They'd done it. They could not hold to it because it is impossible. The multiverse had, in some way, found a way, had to find a way, oh no, found a way to come back first, not as a multiverse, but as a notion that is strange to see only existing. If you go on Wikipedia, hypertime, you would expect hypertime to have become some, you know, to be a concept almost in a no fundamental uh, science. So no, it is only existing as a DC uh, concept on Wikipedia, <laughs> um, and and it didn't it didn't work. And they went back to the multiverse. And a throw of the dice was published as an in independent book as an independent book in 1914, so after uh, Malarmé's death. But what I mean, it was it had been published before, among other things, so in a journal, for the first time on its own, based on the new double-page unit of the poem. Um, it was published in 1914. In 2014, so exactly <laughs> a century uh, after, a hundred years after, or after, I hope, we know now, like it might be on the same way, uh, the same way the verse doesn't obey the direction of the sentence, the same way you can encounter uh, glyphic etymologies uh, before and after starts, I hope, to. Um, and they. And a writer called Grant Morrison has been asked to, as a, as a function, to become the to become the architect of this uh, reformed multiverse. And it was made through a series of eight uh, eight comic books, actually nine, numbered. One, the first issue. So let's say that will uh, come out in uh, August. 2014, and uh, issue number two, the one that came up, uh, let's say, uh, nine months later. Okay, in between these two, all the issues were, num were number number one. 
it was a, it is a series of number one issue. Okay, so chronologically they appeared one after the other, but within the fiction, they exist as not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but as you know one, two, three, four, and you can imagine five, six, seven, eight, right? Another, another, another. This beautiful lecture, when he he speaks at some point, he, he's, he's on his terrace and he looks at the sun, and he has the feeling that this terrace is a tip, tipping up, a Peter Webb, excuse me, a uh, Michael Webb, that this terrace is tipping up, and not only is tipping up, but is tipping up slightly to the right, and uh, well, he, 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 and then went on observing the scene from the viewpoint of the sun. So yes, it will be actually, the sun is not first, the first, of course, the relative movement of the earth will make it to, you know, to go deep towards the other. So again, and here, what you have is not, remember, not the uh, direction of the sentence, it is not the direction of like monthly publication. It is like angles of insertion within the volume that is the series of uh, called multiversity. So one, 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 two. And what was also, what was beautiful is that the only way within this multiverse that one version had to transmit a signal to another were through the comic book you were holding in your hand. So remember Malarmé, like everything became suspense? I think for the first time, Grant Merson did something, is like the suspense was not only what was happening inside the cover of the comic book, but because the AIDS issue would appear in all the seven previous ones, the suspense was what will be the actual status of the object you will hold in your hand. So if, again, in the white, Malarmé, the white of the page, revealed, uh, prismatically, uh, prismatically revealed, the white of the page, Morrison, Grant Morrison, the space between one issue and the next. It's not, it has to be. And also, what you hold is the actual vessel of the communication between the two.
Pull back. Go right. Enhance 5719. Track 45 left. Stop. Thank you.